Hey guys, uh, late review here. Just reviewed Nightmare on Elm Street with my uh, friend and boss Mark doing the Friday the 13th series, all of which I have never seen except for Jason X. This is the like, worst one you could possibly watch. On the 10th day, the Lord gave us to us Jason X. Go give it to your friends, go to live it to your knock knock, open up the door, it's real, oh, with a non top pop off, stay in the steel. Three Dream movies. Warriors! Dream Warriors. Three movies in to finally hear Freddy Krueger say, bitch. What the prime time, bitch? All of the deaths in this movie are awesome. Hey, Jeremy, this is CJ Graham, Jason, Friday the 13th, part six. Having a good time. Two square, wouldn't want to be ya. You have just watched new nightmare we get to watch Freddy vs. Jason. Jason about that though is that review will take some time yeah we're gonna try and do something special for that review so yeah it will take some time but hopefully when it is done you guys will be happy yeah Jeremy my special special boy Mummy has something she wants you to do. You have to review Freddy vs. Jason. I want them to remember. Make them remember. Okay. Yeah, it was worth it, right? Two years. Two, two years. Two years. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. We had all these grand ideas of doing like a video essay and then we just realized, eh, you know what, we should probably just get this <laughs> we over gotta get with. It done. <laughs> we gotta get it done. At the very least, we have some really awesome cameos from people. You just saw Jason's I, mother. I met her, uh, Paula, on a, on a set uh, not too long ago and I was so fucking stoked that she did that for me. And we have several more of those throughout this review. So get ready for those, because we are finally <laughs> reviewing Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah. An accumulation of us, essentially what, starting back in 2017? Yeah, something like that. We've finally gone through all of the Nightmare movies, all of the Friday movies, and now we're finally talking about the matchup that these two the, have. The kind of reason we started this in the first yeah. place was to get to Freddy vs. Jason. Get to this point. To be honest, this movie actually still is as fun to watch now as it was back when I was a kid and I didn't know anything about <laughs> any of the lore between these two. I watched this movie first before I watched any of the Nightmares or so any of the weird. Fridays. <laughs> but now having watched them all, I finally can get all of the, the references, the homages, and all of the clear respect that director Ronnie Young has for those franchises and he tried to put that into this film while also having his own kind of interpretation, just being a lot more bloodier and gorier than the other movies. I enjoy it. I, I think it's a fun yet cheesy experience and it's definitely made for people who enjoy the Friday and the, and the Nightmare series. Yeah. The moment I watched it, I had a shitty grin on my face <laughs> from start to finish when I saw this in theaters. And uh, it's just not Ronnie you things aside that like arguments I've heard about him in the cast and problematic ones. He, he definitely got it. I really liked Bride of Chucky. So when I heard the guy who did Bride of Chucky who kind of revitalized after the third one um, was taken on Freddy vs. Jason. I thought that was such a great idea because he didn't have anything to do with any of the previous Child's Plays and he kind of found that voice to get that movie. And I really think he did an excellent job making this both a Friday movie and a Nightmare movie. I would say equal time. Funny enough, every time that there's been versus movies in any th retrospective, obviously most recently King Kong vs. Godzilla, that movie, if you've seen it, favors King Kong as more so the main person that you're cheering for. In this movie, they both have equal screen time, they both have equal kind of development. They don't get equal kills though. They don't get equal <laughs> kills, no, it's definitely more so Jason Jason's in this movie. killing more people. But they still have equal amount of relevance to the story, I would say. Yeah. And it's not forced, it's just, it's horror icons fighting each other. The build up to getting to their fight, I think they kind of have like a scrap in a dream world at one point, which is actually isn't too bad. The tilt. Ding, 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 ding. But when you finally get to the fight, it is a very, very satisfying. You are not left unfulfilled it's with, awesome. with it. The WWE aspects, which apparently Rey Mysterio Yeah, is apparently Rey Mysterio is in it at one point in this movie. Um, we have an idea of where he is, but yeah, they just all of a sudden this elbow drop. drop. <laughs> and then like all the, like, the firing off the 
uh, canisters, the, tor the torpedoes, all the blood from the spikes. <laughs> so cool. There is so much gore in this movie and during this last fight scene. Everything about it, like right up to the like end where Freddy gets his own arm jammed through his back. Like yeah. it's just awesome. The, it, the payoff for the fight scene really hits. Considering this movie was so long in development too, like it, yeah. technically speaking, it was teased at with Jason Goes to Hell, which was back in the 90s. So yeah. ten, 10 years before we got the first teaser for this when um, Kane Hodder's hand, playing with the Freddy Gump, comes up and grabs Jason's mask and pulls it down to hell. And there was a lot of uh, work apparently put in by a lot of people to try and get this movie made. Yeah. One of them being Kane Hodder, who eventually left because he wasn't yeah. uh, cast back as Bro Jason. I got a chance to talk with Kane about this movie at HorrorCon a couple of years ago now. Just talking to him about it, like, he was on board the whole way, and then when Ronnie came in, Ronnie decided he wanted a bigger Jason. Kane's a big dude, but I, I will say, uh, Ken Kurzinger, who plays Jason in this movie, is a behemoth. The guy, he's six foot five, he's thick. thick. Like, also a super nice dude. Uh, he signed, I've already got him on this one, I'm waiting for my Freddy opportunity. This is the director's cut of so the movie. So Ken, Ken signed, he drew a little knife to under, underline it. I got him to sign that while we were working on a pitch trailer that he was doing for uh, out here, a cowboy movie. That was a lot of fun. Him and I just sat around talking about Freddy vs. Jason all day. So. Oh, that would have been great. Meeting through Kane, you yeah. kind of learned a little bit more. Like In the last few years, who was the gentleman who played uh, Jason in the in sixth, sixth uh, C.J. Graham. Yeah, you've seen Graham. him. He did an we intro. Did hey, Jeremy, this is C.J. Graham. Jason, Friday the 13th, part six. Having a good time. You're missing. Too bad. Too square. Wouldn't want to be ya. We're having a good Told time without come. you. Told you to come. But if you're working, good job. Staying home. If you're just doing nothing because you're lazy. He's doing nothing. He starts you Tuesday just with me. You missed out. Talk to you later, buddy. So it was nice. I got, when I was chatting with Kane, I got him to chirp out Jeremy again. Which was nice, so. <laughs> Hi, uh, Kane Hodder here. Uh, just had a quick uh, note. Jeremy, you fucking missed another one. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much, man. The one thing I wanted to say about casting which is kind of a cool i like talked about ken coming on was the necessity of bringing back robert england we learned with the 2010 remake that i hate more than anything on the planet he just has kruger like he is so yeah. good in this like from the voice intro um which i love the, one of the things that nightmare doesn't really do but uh friday the 13th a lot there's uh, especially early in the friday series there's always the like previously on friday the 13th yes this movie has that with uh, Freddy narrating it, so I thought that was like looking, a nice touch. Looking the photos of children that he's murdered. <laughs> Which is, they do lean a little more into his creepy side in this oh, one. Oh, yes, 100%. I think it also kind of comes with the times. Like, we're a little, you know, by this point, oh, Marilyn Manson and like and all the shock mentality was out. Um, of early 2000s. The like early for, 2000s. Like, this movie's dated right off the bat <laughs> when you hear the new metal intro the Opening pop credits, on. just full new metal, it's great. Yeah, no, this movie definitely has some aging to it. And oddly enough, though, considering it was made in the early 2000s, it's, there are some dated factors to it, but yeah. it's not, like, what would be the word? Um, it's not disparaging. It's not, it yeah. doesn't hurt the movie anymore for having it. Yeah. Um, there is a joke at one point oh. that, what's her name? <laughs> we from dropped Destiny? the wrong F-bomb in yes. this movie, unfortunately. Yeah, there's a line, there's a certain <laughs> joke by made by what's her name from Destiny's Child about F F Kruger. Yeah, because, you know, like, if that's the bad one, like, he was the one who yeah. was talking about raping what's her name yeah. with his glove hand. That's, it's like, yeah. doesn't it, pull, uh, pull any punches. Is it as bad as, it, and it's not as bad as some other, you watch a lot of movies from the early 2000s, hugely homophobic, they are oh. super problematic. Like, movies, basically everything before now, looking at modern sensibilities, it's really hard to watch. There is a bit of a cringy bit between um, Monica Kina's character and the dude who catches his dad's head. That <laughs> one's a little eh, but it's still like... Oh, I would say... It's not too bad, yeah. as far as, like, again, a lot of other consent issues in old school films oh, that yeah, we just no. brushed over back in the day. Like, it, it but for the most part... Yeah, and, it's not bad. Like and, it, it holds up to our sensibilities. Like there is the obvious uh, <clears throat> uh, boob shot at the very beginning oh, yeah. of the film. Lots like, of gratuitous. gratuitous. Lots of gratuitous. I, in this not movie. as much as the unrated version of Friday remake. No, think, yeah, that, that one really leaned into it. Yeah, that uh, one definitely <laughs> did. This one started with it, and then 
there are some bits like when there's the dead when we have that random weird flash into Jason's mind His where dead closet the dead closet and there's the woman who's floating <laughs> just and boobs. just obviously like, like <laughs> just to her face and then she's floating up up oh, booby <laughs> it's also Ronnie shoots this kind of creepy in ways like I, I commented there's a shot of uh, Catherine Isabella where she's smoking blowing the smoke outside but her face is blocked by the window and the shot is just like it's the the window yeah. blocking her face and it's her boobs in frame yes. it's like there's a few of those shots like it's a little too male gazy for mm, yeah. things but that's also still common in Hollywood so yeah and especially not, common at the time changed. when this movie was shot which speaking yeah. of which she was also in Supernatural for those of you who know the end of season 2 yeah she she, she turns on everybody yeah she, 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 yeah she yeah, does yeah she's she, bitch she, yeah traitor's bitch <laughs> speaking of bitch yeah. there's a lot of that oh, in this movie he actually drops a bit a bunch of bitches as other characters in this too yes because that's true we got the tie, tie the bitch up and then we got uh let me handle this bitch um, from uh the yeah. kid from maple ridge that i went to school with oh yeah like freaking <laughs> tyler bean's little brother yeah if you've seen things like tucker and dale or something the mall like rats reject brother. and speaking of all the human characters actually this movie if there is maybe a fault it, it's of course the exposition and the <laughs> yeah. hey let's throw a bunch of random characters but still have them act as though you would know what they are yeah. For someone looking on the outside in, not having watched any of these movies, it's very hard to follow. Even for us, there was a part in the film where I was like, oh, wait a minute, they, they're already here. And for 90 minutes, it's definitely hearkening to fans first, yeah. not actual film logic. If you didn't watch any of the movies, you'd be very much out to lunch, like I was when I was a kid, but I didn't really care. I just wanted to watch the gore in it. But a bunch of gore and boobs. There's a lot of homages. Like, these characters are right out of the Nightmare movies. Not so much the Friday movies, but the yeah. Friday movies never really had any human characters that you actually cared about. No, I mean, after... Corey Feldman, there's there's next to like there's yeah. usually like maybe one character you well, kind of get told to care about. What, what was her name in six? The one oh. who did all the cool car move, like the all the great moves of the car. I can't even remember her name, but that's kind of a that's more example as to why. There are clearly more narrative aspects with the human characters towards the nightmare series, but that's because of the whole kids falling asleep thing yeah. and everyone's a narcoleptic and yes. an alcoholic in yes movie. and clearly not in high school <laughs> yeah. the, the, you know the main girl's not bad uh, her friends aren't bad like everyone's kind of just yeah, eh. yeah pretty much everybody's so i'll actually no i'll throw brendan fletcher i actually really like in this movie that brendan's the the buddy who gets the freddy's back burned on his back oh yes he's, and he was also from supernatural yes he's also i mean unfortunately with 15 season shot here almost every actor that's been in this that's nice. in this movie that's from Vancouver, ends up in Supernatural at some point. Funny enough, one actor who's in this, who's been in a lot of DC stuff, who actually isn't hasn't been in Supernatural as far as I know, is uh, Lachlan. Is, Lachlan not been in Supernatural? I That's don't hilarious. I don't not, think so. That might be the only show Lachlan hasn't I'll been in. I'll have to check again. But yeah, he's been, uh, he's the cop in this movie. Stubbs with the uh, very 2003 frosted tips. Yes, he does. Uh, that's... And he, he just dies kind of suddenly, but... He's yeah. the one who has one of the funniest lines in this movie. And speaking of Lachlan, actually. Can I offer you kids some assistance? Hey, I hope you're enjoying the review. Lachlan and I have known each other for 10 years or something like that. Um, I've run into I've run into him all the time. He's literally in every show in Vancouver. So. And we've gotten to work with him in the past. And I, I, I asked him to do that bit when I was shooting this sniper movie that I've talked oh, about that in the past. Yeah, sniper. that was the sniper when we were inside the what's the farmhouse or uh, uh, Lee Burger. Lee Burger Farm. Lee Burger yeah. Farm. Which also ends up in Supernatural a bunch. Yes, a ton of times. <laughs> cool to see all these actors from like 18 years ago, one of them being Chris Gauthier, who just, we've worked with. I was going to say, bring up Chris Gauthier, the laser eyes guy from Supernatural. He is a buddy of mine and I really wanted to get him to do a cameo for this one. Unfortunately, it's like timing and things. Yes. You'd think over two years I'd have to look at Yeah. He has the absolute best, possibly one of the best deaths in the Friday. like The entire Friday series, entire Friday I would series. say. It starts off, he's got the like, well, hey, Jethro, why don't you go find yourself a pig to fuck? This is at the rave at, when Jason just appears behind the guy. That, 
fucking awesome stunt of Jason walking through the cornfield on fire. Huge amount of money paying for all that corn and everything. They literally walked a flaming dude through that cornfield and burned it all. And then he gets a flaming machete through his chest and bursts out in blood. Oh, it's so fucking rad. It is a pretty good burn. <laughs> it's a very dangerous burn yeah, because he's... And the, how slow he's, he's moving, moving when it first happens. Like, he pulls the sword, the machete out and it's like full slow and he's and you, just burning the whole time. Yeah, and they did use that kind of rotoscope. Well, what is it called when they like to shoot it, they show it at a slower frame yeah, the, rate? I can't, I, yeah, I don't know the, the frame rate for it is, <laughs> but I think it works to... Because they probably couldn't have shot this as long as you would like. Yeah. But considering the high speed slow motion cameras were still kind of not really a thing yet at the time. <laughs> they use it a couple times in this movie. And it, yeah. It, it, that, those ones don't translate great. Uh, when they're showing Chris running through and being chased, there's some like. It, it looks a little weird, and even when Freddy drops into the water at the end, they use it again, and it still looks a little weird. It's still a great kill, though, awesome. and especially when he spits the blood at the at the, the camera. And that leads to one of the coolest, like, just a massacre scene where Jason's cutting everybody just, up, and blood is just spraying everywhere. And at one point, there's a guy who's, like, trying to defend the cure, the beer keg, and then he gets stabbed, and while the beer's splashing yeah, the beer, over they, Jason, they he's just the, like... Eh, they use the beer to put out the fire, like, it's That's a great awesome. shot. There's a lot of good visual elements in this film. Not just in terms of the practical stuff, but also in some of the horror aspects. Like yeah. I said earlier, where Jason's going to his dream place, where the 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 house that's in the middle of the lake, that's a really good shot. When Freddy comes out of the water at the end of the movie to a to near to like surprise the main character yeah. in the dream, that was a great shot because he goes like. 20 feet in the air yeah. and lands back down in front of her in the demon form. There are some very good visual aspects to this film, and not just in terms of how people are killed. Um, I, funny enough, talking about the uh, the wrong F word to say she gets walloped like a fucking bullhorn right against the, <laughs> a tree. Don't know how, because he it looks like he cuts her, yeah. but he somehow hit her with the side or the blunt edge because he just <laughs> and pops she hits right the tree in. And just like yeah, and she's falls. dead. That's great. No, it's one of the, that's one of the just that comes out of nowhere too, because he's just like ah behind you. I really do like when this movie plays off both when uh, Katie Isabella's character gets killed and like Freddy's about to kill her in the dream world, and then Jason stabs her in the no, that was human, mine. The human fucking oh, glow stick. The glow stick and the he like rape the glow stick guy yeah, and, and he launches him in like, the next. That's week. a great moment where they're yelling it like Freddy's all mad. Like it's they play off each other really well. And, uh, yeah, I mean, even the, the fact that Freddy gets less kills, like, Freddy kills less people in his movies. Like, Jason is about murder fest. And that was... Like, when we talk about murder boners, yeah. which I will say, Ken doesn't really rock a murder boner in this one. He's a little passive about his kills. That was probably one of the aspects that made me like the Nightmare movies more was just the visuals. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, and you also had a character who could talk. Yeah. Jason killing people is like, okay, I guess, but those movies... Aside from certain films, have not aged. I feel well at all. No, in some yeah, they're, they're, some of them are pretty rough. More of the nightmare movies are rewatchable. Well, like just look at our look at our reviews. Like our scores for the nightmare movies are way higher. Oh, than... way higher. I think <laughs> there was a few times where it was very fleeting when Friday movies were ever higher. But we yeah. did have some retrospectives because I enjoyed uh, Jason Takes Manhattan for the most part like the first 30 minutes of it is so pointless <laughs> but then once the killing starts then the movie's fun but then there's other movies like what's it uh, what was one that we that you really enjoy that I didn't like I'm trying to remember well I mean I enjoyed New Nightmare more than you but I mean even oh, I, the, yes. the 5 and 6 was the one that surprised me because for Nightmare 5 and 6 I remember hating 6 the most this time I'm pretty sure and now thinking back on it I definitely hate Dream Child more than I hate Freddy's Dead and they take even some of the bad aspects from those movies too but they also take a lot of the good ones and there's these tiny little tidbits here and there like for instance the, the drug Hypnocell yeah. is from comes out of the third one from the third film yeah I had to rock both by the way I'm rocking both teams here. yes so again kind of going all around the movie is very it's it's very respectful if you can call it that what it came before what it's paying yeah. homage to there are some great gore, some great kills. Probably if there's any sort of negative factor to the film, it is the pacing because, there, again, there's a lot of exposition being thrown at you. They even throw exposition at you during the final fight yeah, scene. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it shuts you down a few yeah. times. There's a few moments where the exposition, they feel like they need to, and I guess they do because they're trying yeah, to create, they're trying to create a character, narrative. Character stuff, but. but like the end when she's like, yeah, Freddy killed my mother, and she goes on this, this whole spiel, and the boyfriend's just like, 
Oh man! While we were done, just let these two fight yeah, already. Let's go back to Jason and yeah. kicking the shit out of each other. Yeah, it's, and at the end of the movie, it doesn't even matter. You don't even see what happens to them no. at the end. They just is that really? If really you want to know what happens to them, Freddy versus Jason versus Ash, the comic book, which is a legitimate sequel. To oh, this. it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, her character, like the two of them, are the beginning of, uh, of, oh. of the comic book. I was gonna say because I like how this movie ends kind of ambiguously yeah. with Jason coming out of the water and holding Freddy's head but Freddy's turns does and wink. does the wink it's good I, I do like asses I haven't mentioned I was going to ask it who do you think won well I, I kind of like that I, that aspect that you think it's Jason because Freddy is more so the big bad whereas Jason's a necessary bad yeah. Freddy is the villain and that's because he can talk Jason's just an object. And not just a big stupid dog that won't stop eating. Yes. Great oh, <laughs> fuck his mother. He's so good. Jason does kind of win. Freddy's come back so many different ways. He all like one time, all it took was a dog pissing yeah, dog, on his bones dog piss, dog piss <laughs> to, to, to apparently bring him back. Which so he could come back anyway. I feel that Freddy just yeah. can't die. Um, yeah, I, same I, with Jason too. I'm, I'm in the same boat. I kind of feel like Jason won the battle. Freddy's gonna win the war because Jason theoretically was first of all was killed now he's like a zombie after four yes um but he obviously went away like freddy had to go bring this guy back from the dead even though freddy was gone and not in the dreams he was still kicking around somewhere yeah. so like my mentality is freddy lost this battle but in the like long grand scheme of things you know it's a creative stalemate i don't yeah. want to say yeah and they also neither of them can really die so no it's a shit yeah exactly but it was fun watching and was there any sort of kind of Follow up that they have any ideas or this movie do? Well, they they wanted to do Freddy versus Jason versus Ash like that was a real plan to get. Um, but again, they ran Ooh. into rights problems. Oh yeah, I heard a rumor that's pro that's fairly I'm sure unsubstantiated that apparently there was talk at one point of a season of Ash versus the Evil Dead that... incorporating them, which I thought would have been a really rad way to do it. But yeah. again, I mean rights. that show went away, and I think it was still the same. But I think that was one of those things that got spitballed probably by someone not associated with it but it got me excited because i was like what a cool idea that would be because that show was awesome i wasn't the highest for grossing i think it's for them. both i'm the one of the remake like the remakes might have beat it but definitely at the time uh it was the highest grossing for both franchises which makes sense. It, it made money man it, yeah. and it, it was fun everyone got on board with it it did a really good job the casting um works i'm yeah. glad it has so many vancouverites in it which is oh, dope tons, because yeah. Like a lot of movies, a lot of big movies don't cast a lot of Vancouver people. Like you would have just been bringing up everyone and anyone from LA. Yeah, and I mean they still did. Like you know Monica Kina, um, Kelly Rowland, and uh, Jason Ritter, um, which is funny because um, Brad and Chucky has Jason's dad in it um, in a great role. Those guys are all from elsewhere, but almost everybody. I think Fre Freeberg's probably or, uh, Lederman, not Freeberg. Lederman's probably from elsewhere as well. But pretty much everybody else in the movie is a local, which is super yeah. cool when movies come and do that because, you know, they come here and they film, they use all our crews, we might as well cast our people no, too. Exactly. So some of the deaths in that in that we get, like Brendan Fletcher's death, fucking awesome. No. Chris Gauthier's death, best in the movie. Uh, it's it's just it's cool that we get those moments. Probably it was panned by the critics. <laughs> but it was probably well received by fans yeah. of the series. I think I think most fans like it. It's admittedly slow to kind of watch <laughs> when you're having to watch like the characters, like the human characters, because you're literally just waiting for the last it's, half hour of the it's movie. Kind of, isn't that what I'm hearing about uh, Kong though as well? <laughs> like it's the cat, it's the human stuff that sucks. Oh, the human stuff always <laughs> sucks. And admittedly, at least this movie takes as quick of a time as it can to get yeah. to that. It, like, and, it, and the nice thing is, is the thing that kind of differs is like we're not dealing with like character. Act. We're still getting kills through that whole time, and some of them are stupid. Like when the dad's head pops off. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> just literally fight. like jumps and he uses the dad's head as a shield. No, no, no. There are some stupid bits, but that's kind of a given for this movie and honestly i would say it is one of the more enjoyable movies for me i really kind of wanted to give this a four out of seven because that's kind of really what it is <laughs> really what it is it's a four out of seven but for me just personally because i enjoy it and i am i appreciate it more i'll give this a five out of seven for me even though realistically it should be a four it's a five for me i'll give it a hard six yeah, that's actually yeah. I, I think it's I think it just with what it does to both franchises, the fact that you could take any scene that's just a Jason scene or just a Freddy scene and toss those into a movie for either one of them, and they would feel 
right. I think it's great. I think it does the fan stuff well. Uh, it's a great fight. It's got awesome kills. It's funny. Uh, I was going to mention earlier, and I didn't. There's a great reference, the fact that Michael Myers is not in this movie. Yes. In the opening scene, she's calling for Mike, and we never see Mike because Mike Myers is in this movie. It's a direct reference. Mm -hmm. They're tongue-in-cheek in this whole thing. Yeah, it's very tongue-in-cheek. And it still manages to be good. It's not scary, but then again, none of the Friday movies, in my opinion, are none scary. None of the Friday were. And Some of the Nightmare. And the end, like the later Nightmare movies, oh, yeah, none no. of them are scary either. Good God, no. So the fact that this is funny and still horror works yeah. for me. I think a six is where it's at. And anyone who says otherwise is wrong. <laughs> it's a fun time for those of you who enjoy the series, and even if you haven't watched some of the movies, you can go into this and still kind of just it dumb fun. But there we go. Took two it's years two for years two years for us to talk about it. We'll just say that we had a lot of creative differences <laughs> about how we wanted to do this review. Yeah, it changed a lot. Also, just like how much we've been working. And then know, there's like, when we're off shows, we like want to get together and do something like this, but we're just like... Yeah, on a pandemic hit. And yeah, that too. We couldn't physically do this. Like yeah. The only reason why we can do this is because we get tested on our show. Yeah, constantly so, getting tested. So that so. is why we know we're okay. I don't know if you mentioned that. Again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry again for the delay. Um, hopefully, just to you guys, it's worth it, especially with all these really awesome cameos. We are considering moving on to another one. We have Halloween, the Saw series. Uh, was there any other one? I mean, I still want to do the Leprechaun series at some no, point. It's past March now, but no. we could do the Child's Play movies. We've got a lot to choose from, so we will be seeing us continuing on another very long Make it a Patreon escapade. poll, and I'll vote for whatever I want. I'm <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Anyways, guys. Hey, here's your call-up. Mark Wilmot, thanks for supporting this channel on right. Patreon. Yes, thank you, Mark. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We had a real fun time talking about it. And we're looking forward to doing another series very soon. Yeah. But otherwise, thanks, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. And if you want to subscribe, you also maybe want to check out the Patreon page. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.